Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, this uh, live webinar on rock piano improvisation. So we got a lot of cool stuff to uh, to cover today. First of all, happy Black Friday. Um, so uh, we got a bunch of specials that are going on. If you go back to studywithwilly.com, uh, you can uh, take a look at all the membership specials that I have going on. One thing important to remember is that all of these membership specials, especially like the recurring stuff, like the studio membership at $99 per uh, per quarter, that all sticks. So that price sticks. So I know some students were asking questions like, well, how is that a special? Like, you know, uh, well, because that sticks every three months. You get that, uh, your grandfather into that, that price point. Um, anyway, today what I'm going to be focusing on is I'm going to show you the two um, most important um, ways of approaching rock piano improvisation, okay? And I'll show you two critical ways of thinking about your rock piano improvisation to make it sound, well, Good. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Adele's Hello, all right? So we're going to use that as a, um, as a springboard. I'm also going to use uh, uh, Feeling All Right, okay, the Joe Cocker. Um, to highlight these two different types of rock piano improvisation. I'm also going to show you a, a song that, uh, that I wrote um, uh, a little bit later, and we'll talk about how that, uh, how that song came to be and, and kind of some of the theory and, and stuff behind that. Now, of course, you will get the recordings of this if you are on my email list, right? So make sure that you're a member of my email list. If you go back to studywithwilly.com, in the bottom, there's like a little uh, help chat. Uh, you can chat in, and Carrie can add you to the email list if you're not already uh, on my email list, and you can take a look at all those specials. All right, so let's get started. Uh, the very first thing we're going to take a look at is this Adele's Hello. And uh, remember, too, I know that for some of you it might be kind of difficult for you to see this. I'll tell you uh, kind of what it is that I'm doing here, but remember that um, you will also get the recordings of this as well. But they're sent via email, so make sure that you're on my email list. Otherwise, I can't send them to you. All right, so the chords here for Adele's Hello is an F minor to an A flat. I'm playing this A flat chord in second inversion, so it's E flat, A flat, and C in the right hand, and then an E flat major which is E flat, G, B flat, and then to a D flat major, which is D flat, F, A flat, okay? And basically, the song is built in F minor, okay? So it's all built in my F natural minor, okay? So everything is built off of that F natural minor scale. We can also think of that as an A flat major scale. F natural minor is the same thing as, as A flat major. Now, if you don't know that kind of theory stuff, definitely take a look at my music theory online site. And by the way, I know some of you are going to say, oh, Willie, you're selling during this. No, I'm not selling. All right. I'm telling you where you can get the information. Okay. If you want the information. Now, right now, I'm telling you about this. And what's really important is because this stuff is on sale. And if I don't say this, then students start to get upset at me and like, why didn't you tell me it was on sale? So anyway, musictheoryonline.com. You can now uh, sign up for $14 per month and that price sticks as well. So I definitely take a look at that if you don't understand what I'm talking about in terms of natural minor and related major. All right, so F minor, A flat major, E flat major, D flat major. So the question is, when I'm going to improvise over this, a lot of times probably uh, you guys have probably heard of the blues scale, right? So you might think using my F blues scale, and the notes for the F blues scale are F, A flat, B flat, B natural, C, E flat, and F, right? So. Okay, so the two types of rock piano improvisation that I want you to learn about is pentatonic versus blues, okay? Pentatonic versus blues. So the blues scale, again, F blues scale, right? The F blues scale is F, A flat, B flat, B natural, C, E flat, and F. The F minor pentatonic scale is exactly the same notes minus the B natural. So you just take out the B natural, right? You can, or you can also think of it in terms of just take out the sharp four out of your blues scale, right? And that becomes your minor pentatonic scale. So the minor pentatonic scale and the blues scale, 
very close, right? They're only, the only uh, difference is by one note. And by the way, if you guys have questions uh, during the webinar, be sure to start queuing them up because I will switch over to the screen and uh, take a look at some of the questions. If you're on Facebook uh, and you have questions, you can chat in those questions by going to studywithwilly.com and then um, uh, Carrie can let me know. Uh, she'll post the question as well. All right, so uh, you have to forgive me. It's a little, little chilly here today. So... Um, you have the minor pentatonic and you have the blues scale. So why is that important? It's important because that one note difference changes the whole feel and flavor of your rock piano improvisation. So let me play for you like the Adele stuff. And I'm just going to like kind of improvise it. But this time I'm going to use my blues scale. I want you to just kind of like get the feel of that. So and I'm just going to start by playing the chords. So now you can hear that it kind of has that bluesy, bluesy tin to it. Right? Kind of has that bluesy feel to it, doesn't it? But now the question is, does that actually fit with this song? And I would say, no, it doesn't. Because that's kind of like the blues scale camp. So I said to you uh, just a few minutes ago that there's two different kind of schools of thought in this rock piano improvisation that I want you to think about. And of course, there's many other, but like what I like to do is I like to kind of bring it down to some very basic concepts so that then you could focus in either direction rather than presenting you with a thousand different uh, options and making it uh, virtually impossible for you to know where to, where to start. So, okay, blue scale is one way. Minor pentatonic scale is the other way. And it's basically the same notes except the B natural. So now listen to that, to this improvisation. Improvisation. Can you hear how it, it kind of fits a little bit better, doesn't it? And what's interesting is just that one note difference. That one note difference between the blues scale and the minor pentatonic scale makes all the difference in the world. Okay, so now in Adele's song here, Hello, it's based in F minor, okay? So we can use that F minor pentatonic scale. So now, before we talk about the F minor pentatonic scale, let's talk about the major pentatonic scale. So if I'm in C, the major pentatonic scale, well, first of all, my C major scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? Those are the notes of my C major scale. And if I were to number those notes, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So my major pentatonic scale is the one, two, three, five, and sixth notes of that major scale. Okay, so it's a five note scale, pentatonic, penta, right? Five note scale. So that those five notes uh, comprise the C major pentatonic scale. So the notes are C, D, E, G, A, and then C again. Now let me give you one little quick tip here. Fingering wise, a lot of times I'll do one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, right? And then end on three or four up top there. Okay, so the pentatonic scale is a little bit tricky fingering wise because you never really use that fourth finger or pinky. A lot of times it's uh, the first, second, and third fingers that you're utilizing. Not to say that you don't ever use it, but by and large, one, two, and three get worked a little bit heavier than those other ones. Okay, you usually use four or five when you're getting to the end of the scale. Okay. Um, okay, so now you have that major pentatonic scale. So how do you make it a minor pentatonic scale? Probably the easiest way of thinking about the minor pentatonic scale is if, this, if these are the notes of my C major pentatonic scale, well, guess what? If I go to my natural minor, which would be A, all right, so my natural minor or related minor would be A, and I play these same notes of the C major pentatonic scale, but starting on A, that is now my A minor pentatonic scale. So my C major pentatonic scale and my A minor pentatonic scale are exactly the same notes. Now an easy way of starting to 
really get into the major pentatonic scale is to think about the pattern of one, two, three, five. So root, second, third, and fifth. Let's move back to F minor for a second. So I said F minor, okay, so F minor pentatonic is the same as its related major, uh, major pentatonic scale, okay? Just like C major pentatonic scale was the same notes as A minor pentatonic scale. So now we're gonna go the other way. So think if, I was, if I were saying to you, well, what are the notes of the A minor pentatonic scale? Well, now you go up to C and you say, oh, it's C major, because C is my related major to A minor, okay? And again, check out Music Theory Online if, if you need help with this stuff. If you want more advanced harmony and theory stuff, my Jazz Piano Theory site would be good for you, but that's more of an intermediate to advanced level player, okay? And we get into stuff like tritone substitutions and reharmonizations and all that good stuff. Um, but if you need that beginner theory, check out Music Theory Online. Um, all right, so now, if I'm on F, minor, and I want to figure out what the major pentatonic scale is, well one easy way is go up to the minor third in F, that's A flat, so it's an A flat major pentatonic scale. So the notes of the A flat major pentatonic scale I'm not going to worry about right now. Instead I'm going to worry about getting the root, second, third, and fifth of my A flat major scale. Now that should be pretty simple because we should be able to play that A flat major triad, and guess what, we just got root, third, and fifth right there, A flat, C, and E flat. So now we just got to add in that uh, the the second, all right, which is a whole step up from the root. So it would be B flat. So now I have the notes A flat, B flat, C, and E flat. So that's my root second, third, and fifth. Now guess what? If I put F underneath there, there's my F minor pentatonic scale. Okay, it's literally that simple. So the notes of my F minor pentatonic scale are really just the root second, third, and fifth of the major scale, along with, obviously, the F as well, okay? And as we already know, that's only one note difference than my F blues scale, okay? So now, one way of improvising over um, these, these uh, songs is that you can not just use that one scale, like just using the F minor pentatonic scale, which, which I could do that. You'll notice that uh, left hand, just like root five root, okay, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, and then the right hand are just freely moving up and down that F minor pentatonic scale. So that's one approach. Another way of approaching this whole minor pentatonic scale or pentatonic scale um, uh, concept is that you can think about that pentatonic scale idea over each of the chords. So when I was talking about the pentatonic scale, I said it's the root, the second, the third, and the fifth of the chord, right? So now what if we were to take that same concept and do that on each of the chords? So we have F minor, well what's the root? F, what's the second? G, what's the third? What's well, minor, so it's A flat, and what's the fifth? C. So we have this one, two, three, five, or root, second, third, fifth pattern, okay? So that one, two, three, five pattern, if you don't already know this or don't already practice it or incorporate it into your playing, you definitely want to do it, okay? And I'm going to show you why here. So now I have uh, one, two, three, five on F minor. There's one, two, three, five on A flat, which is A flat, B flat, C, and E flat, okay? The root, second, third, fifth. Now let me go to one, two, three, five on E flat. Now I have E flat, F, G, B flat, and let me go to one, two, three, five on D flat. And I have uh, D flat, E flat, F, and A flat. Now listen to what happens when I start improvising using those notes.
you hear how I started to get... Just started to just play the pattern as is, like not even like kind of like freely improvising around it, just playing the pattern, that one, two, three, five pattern, okay? So now, that's one way of approaching rock improvisation. So if I have like, you know, like I have a, a song like, um, uh, uh, what you call it, um, uh, Fire and Rain. I could do... Now that improvisation right there is me just thinking one, two, three, five on each of those chords. C major, G minor, F major, then back to C. C, G minor, B flat. So. Let me slow it down a little bit for you, so. So one thing you should notice is that I'm not just playing the pattern like like you know I'm not just playing that pattern like like constantly going up and up and up I start to move those notes around so this is where you really have to own all of those notes you have to you really have to know what is the root second third and fifth on each one of these chords okay notice the second is almost always the, the major second, the, the, the natural nine. Why is that? Because while we're doing rock stuff, and you would hardly ever find like a flat nine kind of sound in a, in a, in a uh, rock tune, okay? Not to say that you could never, but I haven't seen. I can't think of one example right now off the top of my head either, okay? So usually it's the natural nine, okay, or the natural second. So, and remember, nine and two, they're interchangeable. It's, just, it's the same thing. We can get into a whole enharmonic discussion about it, but, but that's, that's for another time. All right, so that's the one side, is all that pentatonic stuff, okay? Now the other side is to bring in the blues sound. Now let me stay on fire and rain for a second. So I'm in the key of C, so my C blues scale would be C, E flat, F, F sharp, G, B flat, and C. Now listen to what happens if I improvise using that blues sound over fire and rain. I'm going to start with just playing the chords first of all, all right, and then... Um, and then, and then I'll then I'll move into the uh, improvisation. So just the chords for a second. Improv. Does it sound bad? No, it doesn't sound bad. Well, I mean, subjectively, maybe you think it sounds bad, but note-wise, the notes don't sound bad. Um, the notes work, but it definitely has what? That blues tinge to it. It has that blues flavor. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you, you can tell right away, it kind of has that blues, um, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, concept going on there. So now if I use the pentatonic scale, since I'm in the key of C, you might say, well, wait a second, Willie, we were in the key of F minor before with Adele's Hello, and we were using that F minor pentatonic scale throughout the entire thing. Here we are in the key of C for Fire and Rain. Well, we should probably be able to use that C major pentatonic scale throughout the entire thing. Well, yeah, we probably can. Let's try that. from there. So does that work? Yeah, sure, it works. Does it sound a little bit flat and not all that interesting to the ear? Yeah, it doesn't sound all that interesting to the ear, does it? Because 
equal, quite frankly, it's one pentatonic scale. But now notice that when I move to that root second, third, fifth idea, And then when I move to the next chord, it works there as well. When I move to the F major chord and in the descending pattern there, that works great, okay? So that root second, third, fifth pattern, that four note grouping there is extremely, extremely powerful. Now, within there, if you want stuff to practice, you can come up with all different permutations. So if you just basically list this out as, um, my pen here. So you have a four note pattern. So you have one, two, three, four, right? It's one, two, three, four. All right. I could change that around. I could do four, three, two, one. I could do one, three, two, four, two, three, one, four. I mean, you see the idea, like I could change that four note grouping around and around and around and come up with permutation after permutation. Um, just using those four notes, right? It's easy to kind of move those all around. And I can practice that, but come on, let's call it what it is. Kind of boring practice, isn't it? So my suggestion to you is really start to internalize and get to know the, um, those notes away from the piano. You know, students ask me, like, well, what can I practice away from the piano? Practice that. Take any, any song, okay, let's just take Adele's Hello. All right, F minor, A flat, E flat, D flat. What it's one, two, three, five of each one of those chords? F minor, F, G, A flat, C, A flat, A flat, B flat, C, E flat, E flat, E flat, F, G, B flat, and D flat, D flat, E flat, F, A flat, all right? That's one, two, three, five of each one of those chords. Start to not only get to know those notes, but then like know how to say them. So it's F, G, A flat, C. But now when you're at the piano, start to like just sit with F, you know? Just play root, uh, root five root down here in the left hand and just start to move around that. Two, three notes together. Mash them all together. So there, I'm just like freely just kind of like moving around. Ah, I hit some wrong notes in there, you know, give yourself a break. You're going to hit some wrong notes. It's okay. All right. But now I'm moving around those different four notes and then I move to A flat. E flat. Then D flat. You can like try coming down, you know, try, try like creating patterns and whatnot, but you get to know those four notes. And then now you start to bring that into an improvisation. So. Now, if you're unsure of the notes, then what my suggestion is, start with some very basic rhythms, like quarter notes and eighth notes. So if it's two chords per measure, you play four eighth notes, okay, well that fits perfectly with that four note pattern. See how this all kind of like ties together here? Four note pattern, four eighth notes uh, in two beats, okay? So you have four eighth notes in two beats and then you move on to the next chord. So that means I could just play one, two, three, five, and then one, two, three, five on A flat, then one, two, three, five on E flat, and then one, two, three, five on D flat. I mean, you can start with that as an improvisation. Start to break up those notes and start to move them around. Okay, so now I said that I would also show you. Uh... All right, so this is a lesson I have in the main piano at Willie's site as well. And by the way, if you haven't heard the announcement, I'm now doing a one to one piano initiative. Now, I've been doing my coaching with Willie program 
for over the past year, and students love it. It's, this is basically where, you know, if you're a member of Piano at Willie, you can submit a video, and I will react to it, and we can kind of do this coaching. Uh, but now what I'm going to be doing is I'm also going to be doing live Skype lessons with students, right? This is going to be like a 15, 20-minute lesson with, uh, with students, and you can schedule that each month, and then that's a way in which we could work like live like this and then be recorded and whatnot. So anyway, that will be available for all Piano with Willie students, and if you're already a member of my site, uh, uh, any of these specials that are going on right now, you can tack them onto the end of your current membership. So it's a great way of kind of locking in your membership and locking in uh, the lowest price that we've actually ever offered on our memberships. 51% off on downloads, too. Just go to jazzedge.com for the downloads. Um, okay, so in... Uh, 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 and feeling all right, this has more of a blues feel, doesn't it? So now if I bring in my blues scale. That sounds perfectly fine, all right? Now if I bring in my minor pentatonic scale, or I bring in the pentatonic scale, like... It's like, yeah, that doesn't work. I, that doesn't work on one, two, three, five on each of the chords, right? So it's a C7 chord, so it'd be C, D, E, and G. That's one, two, three, five, and an F would be F, G, A, C, right? That doesn't sound good though on this particular type of song, right? Let's listen to C minor pentatonic over the whole thing. Now, it doesn't sound bad, but it does definitely kind of lose a little bit of that grit, doesn't it? Okay, and that's where that... That's where that, that blue scale really adds a lot of that, that grit to it. So in that situation, the blue scale is a better choice. So let's kind of like wrap this up here and, and, and kind of give you some bullet points. So when getting into a rock piano situation, there's, I tend to think of it in terms of like, okay, is this more of like a pentatonic kind of sound or is this more of like a blues kind of sound? So a pentatonic kind of sound is pentatonic scale, my minor pentatonic scale or major pentatonic scale, whereas a blues situation would be my blues scale. So within the pentatonic realm, I can also think, hey, well, why don't I do this one, two, three, five pattern, which is basically the first four notes of my pentatonic scale, but instead of doing it just in the key, so if I'm in the key of F minor, rather than just staying in the key of F minor, I think of it in terms of each particular chord. And then by doing that, now I start to expand and extend the scales that I have available to me, all right? So certain songs are going to lend themselves more to like a blues kind of sound. Certain songs are going to lend themselves more to a pentatonic kind of sound, all right? Especially if you have like a, a ballad kind of thing, you know, that's going to sound better with a probably a pentatonic kind of sound versus something that's like kind of like, you know, more funky kind of stuff or R&B, you know, or even a gospel or jazzy flair to it is probably going to sound better with that blues scale sound to it as well, okay? Now, of course, there's rhythm involved there and whether you're straight or swung, if it's funk, then it's going to be more straight, whereas if it's a shuffle, it's going to be more of a swung feel to it. Um, so that comes into it as well. But the basic idea is thinking in your head, okay, is this pentatonic or is this blues? So if you're improvising over something that just doesn't sound quite right, well, you might be out of phase, right? You might be choosing like a pentatonic sound when really it needs more of a bluesy sound. Or you might be choosing a pentatonic sound when really it needs more, you might be choosing a bluesy sound when it really needs more of a pentatonic sound, all right? So if you're finding that your rock piano improvisation is not hitting it the way that you want it to, then think about that. Think about, you know, are, are you kind of like in the right phase, all right? So um, let me share with you now a song that I wrote. 
right? And if you have any questions, now's the time to chat them in because we're coming to the end here. This is a song I wrote for my friend Jamie. This is called Jamie's Song. And uh, I'm just going to play a little bit for you of this. And I'll talk a little bit about how I came up with the song because it's, I think it's kind of interesting to, um, to see that uh, from a compositional standpoint. So here we go. So now, let's talk about what's happening here. I go from a G, and then I move down to a G with F in the bass, then down to my E minor chord. So basically, I'm starting in the key of G, then I move to my VI minor chord, but what I do is I do this, um, this mixolydian sound, okay? So now, typically, if I was in the key of G, I would do like... Right? I, I do an F sharp, right? But I'm not going to an F sharp, instead I'm going to an F. And what that does is that brings the song into like, now a mixolydian, now a G mixolydian sound. And now I move down to my E minor. And then now here, I'm listing this as a C, C minor over E flat. So basically now I move from a major sound into a minor sound. So now rather than just staying in G major, now I'm really moving to G minor, and that's my four minor chord, okay? Now a four minor chord is a really powerful chord, especially if you move from the four major to the four minor. So listen if I did something like that. Let me do that again. You know how powerful that is if I move major then, then, then to minor? So it's like, but I didn't want to do that. Instead, I, I move right to minor. Okay. And now here, to now I'm like in a minor sound. It's like, you know, I don't want it to stay minor too long. So now what I do is I move up to like my E minor. Then I move to a D major. So now what is that? D major is the five chord in the key of G. The E minor is a two to a five, the A7, to D. So basically I go from a G major, kind of the mixolydian sound, E minor, six minor, and into a four minor with the third in the bass. And then now I'm moving back into G major and I do a two five to the, to the five chord. So now I'm at the five chord. Now I do another alternate bass here. So I move down to the C. And now I do this chord, which is the G with the B in the bass, right? Kind of gives you uh, a very interesting sound here, very uh, like kind of Bach chorale kind of sound. So it's like, you can think of it as my one chord, right? But the B is in the bass. And now I do a, and I go to a four minor again. Okay, so I, I go from the one major, but with the B in the bass. I go back up to four minor, alternate bass or B flat in the bass, then I do a minor 2-5, this is kind of interesting, okay, so an A minor 7-5-5 five, five, to a D7 flat 9, so there's your flat 9 in kind of a rock sound, right, and now I'm in G minor, then I go to E flat, C minor, D major, so I'm moving from a major sound into a minor sound into a major sound into a minor sound, so I'm in major... I end up moving into a whole nother key. So here. So what I do is I move into B flat major for the bridge. So I was in G major minor for the A section and in the bridge, I moved it into, uh, uh, into the relative major, which is B flat major. And then rather than going right to B flat major, I start on the four chord, which is E flat. Do this uh, two chord over it, so it gives it a, a sharp 11 sound, kind of a Lydian sound, and then B 
flat. One, six, and then two, five, one, and B flat. And then I do a two, five going to E flat. This gives it kind of a jazzy flavor. You do a tritone substitution there. Now this is kind of interesting. So now I'm on C minor, so that's the two minor in the key of B flat. And I do B flat over D, so it's still kind of like the one chord in B flat. But now here I go to A flat. This is like kind of borrowed, right? This A flat is kind of interesting there because it really kind of takes it, um, it's really borrowed from B flat relative minor. So I have G major, then G minor, then I go to the relative major of G minor, which is B flat, but then that one chord, the A flat, I'm actually pulling from the relative minor of, um, or, or the relative major, rather, of B flat. So it's really kind of like, it's like kind of stacked on top of one another. All right, so where am I going with all this? Why am, why am I throwing all this theory out to you, especially if you might not understand it? It's to kind of show you how, like, you, you, you really can, like, piece these rock songs together and piece songs together and, and they really have meaning to them, right? The reason that I choose certain chords and certain progressions has meaning. It's, it's like sometimes it's just like, yes, it sounds good to my ears, but sometimes it's also that like there's, there's a direction that I want to go. So listen to the song. I'm going to play it for you. And just kind of like when you're listening to it, hear it in terms of like moving from kind of happy to melancholy to like, you know, it like it has a range of emotion to it. It's not just, you know... Oh, hey, everything's just awesome all the time, you know? It's like, no, it's not, not like that. It's kind of like resembles life, that sometimes things are easygoing, and then sometimes there's a little bit of tension that you got to work out. So here's a song. And ending on major gives it an ending in which it's like I kind of had all that minor sound, but now ending in major kind of like shoop, brings it back into the positive. Okay, so there's an example of um, how you can take so so rock music doesn't have to be <clears throat> and rock improvisation doesn't have to be like um, flat in terms of like oh it's only four chords. All right, you know we 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 kind of start to think that like, oh, rock music, it's, it's simple, it's only three or four chords. And a lot of rock music is, but you can also kind of bring in some of this more complicated theory and, and kind of a jazz elements to it so that you get some stuff that sounds a little bit more bigger and maybe adds a little bit more progression to it, a little bit more harmony to it, okay? So anyway, uh, that's Jamie's song. So let me uh, see what questions... Uh... So, Steve asks, would you apply this to country music as well? Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh... I, I can't think of a country tune off the top of my head. But anyway, like that kind of, that feel like that Floyd Kramer sound. Check out the Floyd Kramer lesson. I'm not going to go through all of that right now, but basically uh, I did a, a lesson or two on Floyd Kramer. 
But basically, it's all that major pentatonic scale, okay? It's major pentatonic stuff, and it's still the one, two, three, five stuff off of uh, the chords like I was talking about. So that definitely fits in um, uh, traditional country, I would say, or even modern country music as well. Because modern country music kind of like starts to pull from like blues and gospel and rock anyway. So it starts to kind of like all be homogeneous and whatnot. So, um, Michael, can you repeat the notes for the blues scale again? <coughs> so C blues scale, C, E flat, F, F sharp, G, B flat, and C. F blues scale, F, A flat, B flat, B natural, C, E flat, and F. Ellen, best way to begin uh, to learn rock rhythms? Best way is to listen to rock music, listen to rock pianists, and try and imitate uh, any of those rhythms that you're hearing. So isolate one rhythm. So you, like, you know, one rhythm that, that, that you hear a lot is Like you hear that Like listen for that rhythm, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. You'll hear that all over the place. If you really start listening for that rhythm, you're going to hear that rhythm all over the place. So like there, you just try and play the bass line with that rhythm. or. Now you got one rhythm. Now take a look at my lessons on rhythms, take a look at the 16th note stuff. Another good lesson to take a look at is the funk improvisation series that I did. There's like four lessons on that. That's great to take a look at because I go through a bunch of different rhythms in there as well. So you could really take any rhythm, especially like on the site, take a look at any of the funk kind of stuff or rock lessons. Um, because, and I'm, I'm talking the main piano at Willie's I'm not talking funkpianolessons.com or rock, rockpianolessons.com, which you can also do those as well. There's a whole lesson for rock rhythms in the rock site. Um, but just taking one rhythm and working through that one rhythm is the way to start, right? Typically, we think, oh, rhythm, we want to add rhythm to our playing, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to try doing all these different, no, 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 no. Like, just take one rhythm and do that one rhythm over all of the chords and practice it for like 20 minutes, just working that one rhythm over and over and over again. Then move in between different rhythms, come, like that you already, like just play, freely play, and then try and come back to that one rhythm. See how I like keep playing and, and and I keep trying to come back to that rhythm and incorporate it into my playing so that it sounds fluid. Uh, Dennis, for blues, what are the preferred grace notes and which others work as well? I actually did uh, part of this November webinar series. I, I went through that. Actually, that was some of the beginning uh, webinar uh, ones. I forget what I called it. Carrie, you can uh, um, chat that in on the, um, uh, on the webinar. I think it was like blues improvisation, one, two, and three or something. like. Uh, so definitely take a look at those. But basically the minor third to the major third, the sharp four to the fifth. Those are the two that you should get started with. Get to know those really well. The other one is the flat five down to the four. So those three are definitely the ones to start with. Of course, there's others, but start with those first and get those down. Uh, Michael, sorry, Willie, you said them so fast I could not write them down. All right, are you ready? And remember, you can get the recording of this. So C, blue scale, C, E flat, F, F sharp, G, B flat, C, all right? So I'm gonna tell you the C one again because you can always transpose it to another key. C, blue scale, C, E flat, F, F sharp, G, B flat, C, okay? Um, all right, uh, you're talking about, uh, Niall has, uh, says you're talking about A flat to F natural minor earlier. This also fits in with the future, the tune Green Onions. Does that mean A flat major fits over all the chord changes? F, B flat, C, and how do you start to sound outside or a bit different jazzy with that tune, please, Willie? Uh, Green Onions, you know what's like? It's funny. It's the one tune I, I like never play, and I, I'm always, always trying try to remember uh, the the groove on it. I don't remember the groove on it, but I I, I think it's F minor. Yeah. 
that. Let's do this real quick. Um, YouTube to the rescue. Um, whoops. Hopefully. Oh, now I got an ad. All right, now forget. I'm not going to do that right now. But basically, yes. If you're playing an F minor, okay. If you're playing in like an F blues sound, then yes, the notes of that A flat pentatonic scale are going to work over that, okay. But again, it's really going to be dependent upon um, what sound you're looking for. The pentatonic scale, all right. The pentatonic sound over a blues or funky R&B kind of thing is going to lose some of the edge. The thing that the uh, uh, blue scale adds is that edge of the sharp four note, right? So that's where you're just like kind of like thinking like, all right, well, maybe I want the edge or maybe I don't want the edge. Not to say that you have to, you know, use that edge all the time. It's not like to say like, oh, if I'm playing F blues, then I'm always hitting that B natural. No, it's... Actually, uh, another part of the tune, she goes. All right, so that's the F minor to D flat, A flat to E flat. So in that section, I might decide to actually bring in some of the blues stuff. You can hear how it kind of like sounds kind of cool. Now, to start to sound outside, well, first of all, you know, the question is, do you really want to sound outside in a rock tune? But if you want to bring in more of that jazz flair, this is where you can start to like kind of do quartals and then also do your half step um, motion. So like. terrible all right so let me do that again so and then the other thing is you got to kind of get into this as well it's kind of hard to like start to play outside it's like kind of like saying to somebody be funny you know it, it, it like you kind of have to like build into it otherwise it just sounds and feels weird all right <laughs> Kind of hear some of that stuff where you're like kind of like building up some of that half step motion into your pentatonic scale but before getting into any of that i want to suggest that on a rock tune you get into any of that stuff until you really own all of that inside playing all right there's so much inside playing to do that like and, and quite honestly, like I think even like like what I was doing, it just sounds silly on uh, on a rock tune, especially like Adele's stuff. It just doesn't. It seems like it, uh, it sounds out of place. So I want you to consider that. All right, think about: is this right for the tune? And am I doing it just to do it, or am I doing it because that's what I'm really hearing and feeling? Okay, if you're really hearing it and feeling it, well then do it. Right? Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Paula asked, does pentatonic work in uh, Latin music as well? Yes, absolutely. This is not style specific, okay? This is, um, uh, this, this is kind of thinking about in terms of like notes for improvisation. So like if we take like um, Little Suede Shoes.
so on and so forth. So anyway, like now that's, I'm staying in one pentatonic scale, which doesn't sound great on that tune, but you get the idea that it's not about the style, it's more about do these notes function along with the progression and do they function along with the song, okay? So pentatonic is, is like, think of it like a color. You know, so this is a color that you can use. Does it mean that you're always going to use that color? Well, no. You kind of bring it in, and then the more that you get to know about it, the more you get to learn it and understand it and know the sound of it and what it feels like under your hands, then it starts to become a lot easier for you to be able to dial that in when you want it and when you need it. Uh, Steve, nice original song. Rock on. Thank you very much, Steve. I appreciate that. Um, Jamie liked it, so I'm glad you like it as well. So, um, anyway, uh, so that's it for me for today. Um, thank you all very much for joining me today. Uh, I am um, considering doing a live session tomorrow as well. If that's something you'd be interested in, make sure you chat in. Let me know if you want to do that. It would likely be in the afternoon hours like maybe around 3 p.m. Eastern, something like that. So if that's something that would uh, interest all of you guys, let me know, and I would be happy to um, uh, put that together for us, okay? So other than that, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you celebrate Thanksgiving, I want to say on video, thank you. I'm very appreciative of all of you, those who support uh, Piano with Willie and Jazz Edge, and allow me, Carrie, to do what it is that we do. Uh, we love what we do, and we really appreciate having you as students, so thank you very much. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to write in, um, uh, wm at jazzedge.com or support at jazzedge.com, either one of those email addresses. Uh, the sales, just to leave with that, uh, are at um, studywithwilly.com. Okay? So be sure to check out those uh, specials because they are going away. Um, at uh, Tuesday next week, okay, November 29th, the end of the day, those specials are gone and our Black Friday sale is over, okay? I will send you some emails about this over the next few days, so sorry for sending a bunch of emails, but it will slow down uh, after the holidays. Um, and I appreciate you reading my emails, and be sure to read the emails because this is where all the replay links come in, okay? So make sure that you're opening those emails because that's where you get all the replay and all of this, this uh, special extra training and stuff, okay? So anyway, thanks everyone very much. I really appreciate you hanging with me, and I will see all of you. This recording will be ready and will be sent out uh, shortly, and I will see, uh, let's see if... Uh, uh, yeah, it looks like, looks like people are in for tomorrow. Okay, cool. All right, then I, I will see you guys tomorrow as well. So look for me. Uh, like I said, I think it's going to be 3 p.m. I will send out an email, so uh, look for the emails, and then I will mention in there uh, what time the session is going to be and how to get on. All right, so I'll see you all later, and have yourself a great 